Move over Pee Wee Kermit and Burton Ernie. Make room for Ringo. Ringo Starr is about to become a household name all over again. Do you remember when Beatles drummer Ringo Starr was 18 inches tall, had magical powers, conducted trains, and told tales of Thomas the Tank Engine? How did he go from being the drummer for the greatest band of all time to being the star of a children's TV show? This is the story of Shining Time Station. Let me blow my whistle and you just listen. All right, let's see. Opening positions. Ready? Three, two, one, action. Shining Time Station was the American spinoff of the British Thomas and Friends, created by television producers Britt Allcroft and Rick Sigelkow. The children's series ran on PBS for three seasons, from 1989 to 1993, with four hour-long specials in 1995. The show combines elements of live action, singing puppets, and the adventures of Thomas the Tank Engine, which are narrated by Ringo. It was created to introduce the increasingly popular Thomas and Friends to American audiences, which first hit UK televisions five years prior in 1984. Did you know something? Thomas the Tank Engine is evidently as big as the Ninja Turtles in London. I guess they've got Thomas Tank Engine t-shirts and toys and all the teens love it. The show's five-minute segments were repackaged with additional material and was presented to American viewers as Shining Time Station. The series was produced by the Britt Allcroft Company for New York City's PBS station and was originally taped in New York City during its first season and in Toronto during the rest of its run. Britt and Rick ruminated on what kinds of messages they wanted to give to kids. For us to provide them with this programming is a big responsibility because it's helping to nurture the way they're then going to go on and develop in life. It's always foremost in your mind, uh, is this appropriate? Is this right? The right message, uh, the right kind of character, the right theme to be projecting out to, to millions of children uh, who rely so heavily on television to really tell them about the world. With Shining Time Station, Britt and Rick brought together a tapestry of whimsical, entertaining, and fun characters, all overseen by the magical miniature Sentinel of the Station, who calls himself Mr. Conductor. Mr. Conductor is a tiny man who lives in a signal house inside the station's mural and tells the stories taken from Thomas and Friends to the kids. Ringo Starr, who had already been providing the voice of the storyteller for the British series, agreed to extend the role to include the on-screen character of Mr. Conductor in Shining Time Station. Well, he is this uh, magical man who has a great philosophy of life of uh, all for the good and uh, talks with children, not at them, and listens to them. And when the uh, hopes are down, he tries to raise them. It's roughly what I do. But how did Ringo Starr, a former Beatle, get involved in a children's TV show? Here, he accounts how he was approached in his own words. Uh, Britt Allcroft, who produced the show, she uh, she came up to see me. Well, she wrote a letter first, then she came to see me. She had this idea for me to narrate these children's stories. And they're all about these fabulous little trains, you know. And I uh, I really backed off at the beginning, thinking, well, kids are into uh, dinosaurs with guns on their backs, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. spaceships. Yeah. I used it. It's his line, actually. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and so... You know, she kept at me, and then in the end, I said, OK, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll just read flat uh, five of the stories. And I sent the tape to her, and if you still need me, then we'll talk again. And she still needed me, and uh, so we did them. And uh, it was just amazing how big it got. Ultimately, Ringo left the show in 1991 due to unspecified scheduling problems, and comedian George Carlin took over as the new Mr. Conductor. Greetings, my excellent friend. Do you know when the Mongols ruled China? The show resolved the change of actors by explaining that Ringo's Mr. Conductor went to live with Santa at the North Pole to help him with Santa's workshop. And his cousin, 
Carlin's Mr. Conductor moved into the station in Ringo's absence. A man named Mr. Nicholas came to visit us at Christmas time. Mr. Nicholas needed help in his workshop, so when he went back to his home at the North Pole, Mr. Conductor went along with him. But then Mr. Conductor's cousin arrived. There's always a Mr. Conductor living here, or else it wouldn't be Shining Time Station. In addition to being miniature, Mr. Conductor has various forms of magic gold dust, including some for teleportation, forgetfulness, love, sleep, and pranks. Oh, darn shoelaces! It also can make inanimate objects come alive. George Carlin explains the appeal of Mr. Conductor. Back to Mr. Conductor. I said to Britt, he's got two things combined. He's small like a child, he's childlike like a child, but he's fully developed like an adult and he's wise like an adult. These things are joined, so there's a unity in him that is complete. I think he's fascinating to children because he's got the things children need from adults, experience and information, and gold dust. At the same time, he's totally unthreatening. He's even smaller and more powerless than they are. He's a baby adult. The focus of Shining Time Station primarily followed station manager Stacy Jones and her nephews Matt and Dan and arcade manager Schemer. Stacy Jones was played by Dee Dee Kahn, who is best known for her role as Frenchie in Greece. Beauty school dropout, hanging around the corner store. Completing the main cast was mechanic Harry Cupper and his granddaughters. Well, see you later, Harry. I want to take a last ride around the station. This has always been a strange place. And engineer Billy Two Feathers, who replaced Harry after the first season. The kids at Shining Time Station would learn special lessons about life and getting along with others from the miniature Mr. Conductor. The lessons were then illustrated in segments featuring Thomas the Tank Engine. In addition, various characters would request songs from the jukebox. And these songs were played by a band of puppets who actually lived inside the jukebox. The Thomas the Tank Engine segments utilized scale train models and were direct adaptations of the Thomas books. Something interesting is that Ringo Starr actually enjoyed being minute and magical as Mr. Conductor. The former Beatle was charmed by the fact that his character, whose scenes were shot separately and superimposed into those with his young co-stars, was so tiny. I know if a kid comes over to me now and says, Ringo, his mother sent him. <laughs> Does the kid say, ah, it's Mr. Conductor. George Carlin, who is best known for his crude humor and vulgarity, also surprised audiences with his sweet performances. It's also worth noting that throughout the series, entire episodes, and at one point an entire season, were knocked out of continuity due to flashbacks from later episodes. For example, the series finale, How the Station Got Its Name, changed the continuity of the entire first season. After three seasons and four television specials, Shining Time Station came to an end. Although reruns continued to air on PBS until 1998, the show spawned the movie Thomas and the Magic Railroad in 2000. Hello, Shining Time Station manager Stacy Jones speaking. Featuring Peter Fonda, child star Mara Wilson, and Alec Baldwin as Mr. Conductor, though it didn't fare well at the box office. The box office failure of the film caused Alcroft to resign as deputy chairman of her own company in September 2000. Thomas the Tank Engine continued on in the Thomas and Friends series until 2020, where it finally came to an end after 24 seasons. According to Shining Time Station creator Britt Alcroft, she and Rick Sigelkow are currently working on releasing Shining Time Station onto DVD. However, Sigelkow confirmed in 2021 that the masters of Shining Time Station and Thomas are with Mattel, and no other news regarding a DVD release for the series has been announced. So it is currently unknown if the DVD project will be completed. There is currently no way to stream, rent, or buy the show, but it is not an example of lost media. There is a dedicated community who has made a concerted effort to source as many episodes as possible and make them available for free on YouTube. These are typically VHS rips, 
Whoever went to the trouble of saving these personal copies of the episodes on VHS, ripped them, and published them to YouTube must have cared a lot about preserving the memory of this show. Series creator Britt Allcroft even responded to a YouTube clip of the show saying, Thank you for posting this. Rick and I and all the company of actors, musicians, and crew loved our time in Toronto. Marvelous memories, and yes, it should be available for all to see. God bless you for giving us all that feeling again, Britt Allcroft. How frustrating it must be to create something, but you don't have the rights to share it with the world. As a series, Shining Time Station received critical acclaim. An instant hit with North American audiences, Shining Time Station went on to win an Emmy, a Parents' Choice Gold Award, an Action for Children's Television Award, and a Gemini for Best Children's Series in Canada. At the peak of its popularity, the show brought in up to 7.5 million viewers every week. People are calling this one of the best things on TV. No, Why is it really that? is. It's charming, and it has very imaginative use of animation, and the actors are really good, and the story Stories are, you know, things that we can relate to with very good morals and lessons for all of us. And, and it's well done to the point where a parent and a child can watch it together and the parent's not bored. Personally, Shining Time Station was the show I would watch as a kid while visiting my grandparents. Much like my time with my grandparents, visiting Shining Time Station felt like being wrapped in a safe, warm, cozy blanket. For me, the most memorable character wasn't Thomas. It was the tiny conductor, who I would later realize when I grew older was the drummer for the greatest band of all time. Even after I accepted him as a Beatle, I still thought of him as Mr. Conductor. Somehow, it seemed that was his final magic trick.